Hey guys, Badger here. In the previous video I showed you guys how to install Windows directly from the hard drive without the need of a CD, DVD or USB device. And I promised you I would show you how to do it from a USB or USB external hard drive. Anyways, if you want to check out that video, just look up here, you know, somewhere. I'll put the annotation in, I'm sure. And, okay, let's go. Tools that you'll need is 7-Zip and the easy to boot program. I will provide the links. Now firstly we go to 7-Zip and we can now choose the download you know whichever one of these EXEs you want to take uh, albeit 32 or 64 bit depending on your system architecture. If you do not know your system architecture uh, I'm not sure you should be playing around with this but no matter you can just go to your file explorer or my computer depending on your Windows version and you can right click on my computer and it should show you which architecture you're running anyways okay so you download your 7-zip depending on your system architecture when that's finished you install it I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that when finished you go up to the easy to boot forward slash download website and you will see if you scroll down a little bit here are your downloads now you've got two different variations here you've got 38 meg with a dpms pack and the 12 meg with no dpms now dpms is recommended if you are planning on putting on xp onto any newer age computer that no longer supports it i would recommend getting that because you never know let's be honest okay so then we download this this version here, which I already have done. Okay, now that we've got that, this is where 7-zip comes in, because for some reason Windows cannot natively extract all these files. I don't know why. Any case, so we right click it, we go to 7-zip, and we say extract to the folder name. This could take a few seconds, all depends on your machine. Okay, so we open up the folder. My flash drive is already in, the one that I'm planning to use for this. Um, okay, then we go to the make e E2B USB drive. Please note you have to run this as administrator, so we right click, we say run as admin. Yes, I do want to run. Now if you have an internet connection it will usually show you, and as I'm running now without one, it's not showing me uh, if there's a latest, later version in any case. Okay. It's picked up my flash drive, so yes, we select number 2 or whatever the drive is that you want. Please note you will be formatting, you have no choice in this. Okay, now it's giving me two options, NTFS or FAT32. Now, NTFS is a bit slower than FAT on some of these ISOs, especially on a normal USB flash drive. Um, NTFS is slower but it can support files over 4 gig where FAT cannot but is faster so it all depends now the only reason you would only take FAT32 is if you're only planning on installing XP or I don't know, Windows Vista any guess since none of us are stupid enough to try Vista um, let's just go type in the N for NTFS say yes and as you'll see it is starting to format the drive so I really hope you guys made backups anyways now this could take a few seconds to a few minutes again depending on the speed of your computer and the speed of the drive now if you're using a normal flash drive depending on if it's USB 2, USB 3 USB 3 is obviously recommended since it's a hell of a lot faster but I'm using it on a USB 2 drive right now because for some reason I can't find my USB 3 flash drive. Anyways, um, also if you're installing to a USB 3 external hard drive, this will be much, much faster, especially in copying the files. Okay, there you go. The format's now complete. It is starting to copy over the actual files to your flash drive. Now this really depends on the speed of your drive. Um, please note some antiviruses do tend to get in the way of this, for example Trend Micro Antivirus, not saying them bad, it's just they can get in the way of a mass copy to a USB drive every now and then. So if you do have Trend Micro, just switch it off for a few seconds. 
Um, if your antivirus gets in the way, just turn it off until you're finished with this, and when you're done, you can turn it back on. Okay, then, after about 15 bloody minutes, uh, mine finished, and it has already written the configuration file, and everything is there. Okay, so next we just need to select the language, so we just say before, show file names, why are you not showing me the rest? Okay, well, in any case, we we'll say yes, and no, I do not want the animated icon. I don't know why doing this. Weird. Anyways. Uh, there you go. Okay, so the last question was, do you want to write the my etb config file? Please select yes. And um, because we will need this later. Okay, you can now close this. And then go to the actual flash drive. And you'll see there are all of your files. Okay, now little trick here, if you go into ISO, and you go to your editor, you'll see it's going to ask you for the config file, so you can just say the my e2b config, and now it's asking you for a bitmap image, this is so that you can change the background, so let's quickly see if we can find a background here that we can use. Hmm, mm, files, lovely, I wonder if it can take JPEG files, let's have a look. No, why not? Okay. Uh, bugger off. Okay, shot. So, I need to move that to the actual flash drive. Okay, but in any case, I know how the how this works. So, we have to make sure that whatever background you choose, just make sure that it is 1024 by 768 exactly or 800 by 600 so let's just open this with paint so, yeah. um, it's just for you guys that don't know how to resize an image so we just go to resize pixels and we say 1024 let's hit the ratio of 768 sorry if you can hear the dogs in the background because that is bloody annoying. Now we save it as a BMP picture and we save it on the ISO itself and we call it wall paper. There you go. Okay, shot. So now if we go back to the flash drive, we go back to editor and we go to easy to boot config file. There you go. Now it should ask me the BMP. Save wallpaper. And that's it. See now. You can edit out here, you know, for example, leave all of that there, and we just call it BTEC IT Solutions main menu. It will automatically put in the date, the time, and the version of this program. And from here, you can change all of your text colors and when it's selected it goes red and help text is yellow and so on and so forth. When you're finished you just say save config file and there you go. Okay, now we can exit it. Now, if all went well, you can actually run this test. So you go to remove test, say run as admin, yes. But at least you can test if your driver is working and it should be. I don't see any issues. Now all that you need to do is you go into ISO and you, you get all of your folders you'll see it already has some memory test utilities and so on integrated in the flash drive already. Uh, we've got our WinPE and then you've got Windows and if you want you can even put in some Linux there. So if we go into Windows we just choose the Windows version we want to load in. There you go and then we can just move over one of the Windows ISO files that we want to load in there. Okay, so I can just say, okay, fine, I want this. Which one are we going to take? Okay, well, anyways, there's a Windows 10, and basically you just paste it through and carry on for each different subfolder. So Windows 7 ISO goes into the Win7 folder and so on and so forth. I think you get the idea. 
So you can do exactly the same with Linux. I'm not sure if I've got a Linux um, ISO yet at all. Oh yeah, I do, actually. It's old Kali. Uh, that'll work. Any case, uh, IP copies or something. It's a lot smaller. Okay. And then we just put it in the Linux folder and we say paste. Now, again, all depending on your flash drive. As you can see, mine's pretty damn pathetic, but it works. And when it's actually booted up into the BIOS, it actually runs fairly bloody fast. And you can install um, Windows a lot faster than what you ever could from a CD or a DVD. But if you want to go even faster, just watch the previous video on where I show you how to install it directly from the hard drive. Because you can't really get much faster than that. Okay, guys, I think you get the idea. Enjoy. Okay guys, as promised, I'm just going to show you what the drive looks like when it boots. Okay, so I've got it in a live machine now. It is, as you can see, it's running through its processes, counting all the ISO files that we've loaded on. But it's at least much, much faster. Okay, there's the main menu. As you can see, the BTEC IT solutions at the top, how much RAM I have, date, time, that type of story. Then you can see a DOS menu, Linux, Utilities, and Windows. Now we're gonna, we want to select number six here because we want to make it as the default timeout. Okay, so we go to set item number six, timeout 30, just so after about 30 seconds. You know, if you accidentally leave the drive in the machine, it won't get stuck here, it will actually continue booting. So if we go to the Windows install menu, there you go, I only loaded Windows 10. You can install it from here, as you would with a CD or DVD. Okay, if we go back to the main menu, we go to Linux, and there's IPCOP. Do not use the ISO ASK extension, so say no, and there's IPCOP. From here you can install just as you would normally. Okay guys, like if you liked this video, dislike it if you didn't. I really don't mind and you know the deal by now subscribe if you enjoyed this and if you want any more now if there's anything specific you guys need help with I'm always available just give me a shout out okay guys see you later enjoy